Nalumvonusafero, Wikipedia article audio. Nalumvonusafero, also known as Indian Lotus, Sacred Lotus, Bean of India, Egyptian Bean, or simply Lotus, is one of two extant species of aquatic plant in the family Nalumbanaceae. The Linnean binomial Nalumbonusafero gertun is the currently recognized name for this species, which has been classified under the former names, Nalumbium speciosum wild and Nymphia nalumbo, among others. This plant is an aquatic perennial. Under favorable circumstances its seeds may remain viable for many years, with the oldest recorded lotus germination being from that of seeds 1,300 years old recovered from a dry lake bed in northeastern China. Classification Botany Production systems Cultivation Planting Harvest Varieties and cultivars Rhizome Lotus Seed Lotus Flower Lotus Use Use in water treatment Commercialization limit through storage restrictions Use in bioengineering Health properties and nutrients Traditional medicine Rhizomes Seeds Chemical composition Human consumption Rhizomes 2 Pips Seeds 2 Stems Leaves Flower Native to tropical Asia, and Queensland, Australia, it is commonly cultivated in water gardens. It is also the national flower of India, and Vietnam. Risks of consumption Other uses While all modern plant taxonomy systems agree that this species belongs in the genus Nalumbo, the systems disagree as to which family Nalumbo should be placed in, or whether the genus should belong in its own unique family and order. Cultural Significance Gallery The lotus is often confused with the water lilies. In fact, several older systems, such as the Bentham and Hooker system call the lotus Nymphia Nalumbo. This is, however, evolutionarily incorrect. Far from being in the same family, Nymphia and Nalumbo are members of different orders. The roots of lotus are planted in the soil of the pond or river bottom, while the leaves float on top of the water surface or are held well above it. The flowers are usually found on thick stems rising several centimeters above the leaves. The plant normally grows up to a height of about 150 centimeters and a horizontal spread of up to 3 meters, but some unverified reports place the height as high as over 5 meters. The leaves may be as large as 60 centimeters in diameter, while the showy flowers can be up to 20 centimeters in diameter. Researchers report that the lotus has the remarkable ability to regulate the temperature of its flowers to within a narrow range just as humans and other warm-blooded animals do. Roger S. Seymour and Paul Schultz Motel, physiologists at the University of Adelaide in Australia, found that lotus flowers blooming in the Adelaide Botanic Gardens maintained a temperature of 30A Euro 35A degrees C even when the air temperature dropped to 10 A degrees C. They suspect the flowers may be doing this to attract cold-blooded insect pollinators. Studies published in the journals Nature and Philosophical Transactions, Biological Sciences were in 1996 and 1998 important contributions in the field of thermoregulation, heat-producing, in plants. 
Two other species known to be able to regulate their temperature include Simplocarpus fetidus and Philodendron cellum. An individual lotus can live for over a thousand years and has the rare ability to revive into activity after stasis. In 1994, a seed from a sacred lotus, dated at roughly 1,300 years old a plus or minus 270 years, was successfully germinated. As mentioned earlier, the traditional sacred lotus is only distantly related to Nymphia cerulea, but possesses similar chemistry. Both Nymphia cerulea and the Lumbo nucifero contain the alkaloids nuciferine and aporphine. The genome of the sacred lotus was sequenced in May 2013. About 70% of lotus for the human consumption is produced in China. In 2005, the cultivation area in China was estimated at 300,000 hectares. A majority of lotus production takes place in managed farming systems in ponds or flooded fields like rice. The most widely used system is crop rotation with rice and vegetables. This system is applicable if the propagule can be planted early in the year. The rhizomes are harvested in July, after which rice can be planted into the same field. Rice is then harvested in October. From November until March, the field stays either free, or a wick terriculous vegetable such as cabbage or spinach, is planted. Alternatively, the vegetable can also be planted after the harvest of lotus. Another alternative way is to not harvest the lotus rhizome, although it is ripe. A terriculous vegetable is planted between the rhizomes into the drained field. The rhizomes are then harvested next March. A third way is to plant lotus in ponds or fields and raise aquatic animals such as fish, shrimp, or crab in the same field. A more efficient use of the water for both, the aquatic animal and the lotus production, has been identified with this planting pattern. The sacred lotus grows in water up to 2.5 m. The minimum water depth should not be lower than 30 cm. In colder climates such a low water level, which heats up more quickly, is helpful for better growth and flowering. Lotus germinates at temperatures above 13 A degree C. Most varieties are not cold hardy. In the growing season from April to September, the average daytime temperature needed is 23 to 27 A degree C. In regions with low light levels in winter, the sacred lotus has a period of dormancy. The tubers are not cold resistant, but can resist temperatures below 0 A degree C if they are covered with an insulating cover of water or soil. During winter time, the roots have to be stored at a frost-free place. The sacred lotus requires a nutrient-rich loamy soil. In the beginning of the summer period, a small part of rhizome with at least one eye is either planted in ponds or directly into a flooded field. There are several other propagation ways via seeds or buds. Furthermore, tissue culture is a promising propagation method for the future to produce high volumes of uniform, true to type, disease free materials. First step of the cultivation is to plow the dry field. One round of manure is applied after 10 days, before flooding the field. To support a quick initial growth, the water level is hold relatively low and is increased when plants grow. Then a maximum of approximately 4,000 rhizome pieces per hectare are used to plant directly into the mud 10A15 cm below the soil surface. The stolon is ready to harvest two to three months after planting. It must be harvested before the flowering. Harvesting the stolon is done by manual labor, too. For this step, the field is not drained. 
By pulling and shaking the young leaves in the shallow water, the stolon is pulled out of the water. Three months after planting, the first leaves and flowers can be harvested. Flowers can be picked every two days during summer and every three days during the colder season. Four months after planting, the production of flowers has its climax. The harvest of flowers is usually done by hand during three to four months. Seeds and seed pods can be harvested when they turn black four to eight months after planting. After sun drying for two to three days, they are processed by mechanical tools to separate seed coats and embryos. The rhizomes mature to a suitable stage for eating in approximately six to nine months. Early varieties are harvested in July until September and late varieties from October until March, after the ponds or fields are drained. The large, starch-rich rhizomes are easy to dig out of the drained soil. In small-scale production, they are harvested by hand using fork-like tools. In Japan and on bigger farms the manual labor harvesting is fully replaced by machines. Lotus varieties Have been classified according to their use into three types, rhizome lotus, seed lotus, and flower lotus. Varieties that show more than one of these characteristics are classified by the strongest feature. Regarding production area in China, Rhizome lotus has the largest area with 200,000 ha, followed by seed lotus with 20,000 ha. Rhizome lotus cultivars produce higher yield of and better quality rhizomes than seed and flower lotus. Furthermore, this group grows the tallest and produces no or very few flowers. Cultivars can be classified by harvest time or by the depth of rhizomes into these types. The main popular Nalumbo nucifero cultivars in China are Elian 1, Elian 4, Elian 5, 9200, and 17, Xin 1 and 00A001. Average yield of these cultivars is 7.5 Euro 15 t slash ha of harvest in July and 30 Euro 45 t slash ha of harvest in September. In Australia, the cultivar grown for the fresh rhizome market is Kwangdong and in Japan the common rhizome cultivars are Tenno and Bichu. The characteristics of seed lotus cultivars are a large number of carpels and seed sets as well as large seeds with better nutritional properties. Roots of these varieties are thin, fibrous, and do not form good rhizomes. The main popular cultivars for seed production in China are Kunsanlian, Xianglian 1, Zilian 2, Jianlian, Ganlian 62 and Taekong 36. Average yield of these cultivars in China is 1.05 a euro 1.9 t slash ha of dry seeds and weight of 1,000 seeds between 1,020 to 1,800 grams. Green jade and Vietnam red are recommended cultivars for seed production in Australia. Flower lotus cultivars are used exclusively for ornamental purpose produce a large number of flowers and the lowest plant height. Seed production of flower lotus is poor regarding yield and quality. Flower types differ in the number of petals and their colors range from single color in white, yellow, pink, red to bicolor, most often of white petals with pink tip or highlights. Nalumbo nucifero shows high potential for usage in wastewater treatment removing polluting compounds and heavy metals. It is able to grow in variable water conditions and in low light intensity. Various studies show the successful use of N. nucifero to counteract water eutrophication. The leaves of the floating lotus reduces sunlight reaching the lower part of the water. This suppresses algae growth in N. nucifero aquatic systems and thus, 
the oxygen content is up to 20% higher than in other aquatic plant systems. Due to intense agricultural practices, nitrogen and phosphorus pollution are major problems in aquatic systems. N. Nucifero is able to assimilate phosphorus in a higher content than currently used aquatic plants for water remediation. It assimilates nitrogen and additionally creates a habitat for bacterial growth in the water body including denitrification. Through rhizofiltration heavy metals including arsenic, copper, cadmium can be removed efficiently from the water. The results observed are impressive showing 96% of copper and 85% cadmium metals removed after a 7-day incubation period. The accumulation of heavy metals doesn't show morphological symptoms of metal toxicity, however, the rhizome quality for human consumption needs further study. Currently most rhizomes are consumed freshly and it is not widely common to store them due to their poor shelf life performance. This limits export possibilities for low-income production countries in Asia. Rhizomes quickly lose water, oxidation occurs and nutrient composition change within short time after harvest. Optimal storage temperatures ranges between 5 to 8 A degrees C. There are three different approaches to store rhizomes. By stacking the rhizome, they are storable and fresh for about three weeks. Special stacking with silver sand and soil results in five to six layers that prevent water loss, thus the rhizome is fresh for up to two months. However the method is not applicable for commercialization but rather for home use. Through hydrogen sulfide fumigation enzymatic browning is reduced and therefore quality of n nucifero is ensured. Dipping the rhizomes in a salt solution prevents oxidation and bacterial reproduction, which allows a storage up to 5 months and a better export ability. This treatment is related to high cost and inefficient cleaning process before eating the rhizomes. Premature cultivars are harvested before the end of July, serotonous cultivars from September on and mid-serotonous or mid-matutinal cultivars are in between these harvest times. Using premature cultivars, rhizomes can be harvested earlier and therefore be sold for a higher price, add literal, deep, and intermediate cultivars are distinguished according to the depth in which the rhizomes grow underground. Ad literal cultivars range from 10 to 20 cm depth and are often premature. They develop faster due to higher temperature in surface soil layers. When harvested in July, ad literals have higher yields than deeper growing cultivars, but not necessarily when harvested in September. Rhizomes of ad literal cultivars are crisp and good for frying purposes. Deep cultivars grow more than 40 cm deep. They are often serotonous and can harvest high yield. Their rhizomes are starch rich. Nalumbo nucifero contains some thermal stable proteins that might be useful in protein bioengineering processes. The proteins are characterized by seed longevity used for cell protection and repair under stress. There are also several indications that compounds of N. nucifero are used in drug fabrication in human health research for multiple purposes. All parts of Nalumbo nucifero are edible, with the rhizome and seeds being the main consumption parts. Traditionally rhizomes, leaves, and seeds have been used as folk medicines, Ayurveda, Chinese traditional medicine and oriental medicine. While leaves are used for hematemesis, epistaxis, and hematuria, the flowers are used for diarrhea, cholera, fever, and hyperdipsia. Rhizomes are promoted have purported diuretic, anti-diabetic, and anti-inflammatory properties. In Chinese medicine, seeds are still used as lianzixi.
lotus rhizomes and seeds and their processing byproducts are widely consumed in Asia, Americas, and Oceania for high content of physiologically active substances. Especially in China, lotus seeds are popular with a cultural history going back about 3,000 years. As early as the Han Dynasty, lotus seeds were already recorded as sweet, astringent, nourishing the heart and kidney in Chen Nong's herbal classic. Nowadays there are 22 varieties for the four known Chinese lines, which are found particularly in Janning and Guangchang. These days the perennial aquatic herb is gaining popularity because of its nutraceutical and historical importance it will be of economic value if the different parts of lotus can be developed as functional food. Because of the special role in human health and richness in nutrients and bioactive substances, the Chinese Ministry of Health approved the use of N. nucifero as both food and medicine. The rhizomes are 6,0 a euro 14 cm long, 0.5 a euro 2.5 cm in diameter, yellowish white to yellowish brown, smooth and with nodes and internodes. The lotus root is used to add seasoning to food. Lotus root is a moderate calorie root vegetable and is composed of several vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, 83.80% water, 0.11% fat, 1.56% reducing sugar, 0.41% sucrose, 2.70% crude protein, 9.25% starch, 0.80% fiber, 0.10% ash, and 0.06% calcium. 100 grams of root provides 44 milligrams of vitamin C or 73% of daily recommended values. Lotus rhizome and its extracts have shown diuretic, psychopharmacological, anti-diabetic, anti-obesity, hypoglycemic, antipyretic, and antioxidant activities. Lotus seeds are mostly oval or spherical, with sizes varying according to varieties. They are generally 1.2 a euro 1.8 cm long with diameter ranging from 0.8 to 1.4 cm and a weight of 1.1 a euro 1.4 g. After lotus seeds have been decorticated and peeled, they are edible and rich in nutrients, and can be dried for storage. Their nutritional values can differ due to culture environments and varieties. Not only do these seeds contain proteins of high quality and are rich in variety of essential amino acids including high contents of albumin and globulin, they also contain unsaturated fatty acids, carbohydrates, vitamins, calcium, iron, zinc, phosphorus, and other trace elements. They also provide water-soluble polysaccharides, alkaloids, flavonoids, superoxide dismutase, and other bioactive components. Lotus seed also contain particularly large amounts of vitamins, including VB1, VB2, VB6 and vitamin E. The functional components in N. nucifero seeds can help combating high blood pressure, diabetes, and gallstones. Lotus seeds' water-soluble polysaccharides have also been shown to promote lymphocyte transformation and enhance the immune function. After lotus seed germination, crude protein and fat levels in the endosperm significantly increase. It is therefore an important method to enhance its nutritional quality. The flavonol mycolianin, as well as the alkaloids cocarine and norcocarine, can be found in the leaves of N. nucifero. The plant also contains nuciferine and aporphine. The rhizomes of lotus are called cu in pinyin Chinese, which is pronounced now in the Cantonese dialect. Nelamala in Sinhala, Tambu in Mitei, Kamal Kakri in Hindi, Renkan in Japanese, and Yanja-un in Korean.
They are consumed as a vegetable in Asian countries, extensively in China and Japan, sold whole or in cut pieces, fresh, frozen, or canned. They are fried or cooked mostly in soups, soaked in syrup or pickled in vinegar. Lotus rhizomes have a crunchy texture with sweet tangy flavors and are a classic dish at many banquets where they are deep fried, stir fried, or stuffed with meats or preserved fruits. Salads with prawns, sesame oil, or coriander leaves are also popular. Unfortunately, fresh lotus root slices are limited by a fast browning rate. Lotus root tea is consumed in Korea. Japan is one of the primary users of the rhizomes, representing about 1% of all vegetables consumed. Japan grows its own lotus but still must import 18A Euro trademark 000 tons of lotus rhizome each year, of which China provides 15,000 tons yearly. Rhizomes contain high amounts of starch without characteristic taste or odor. The texture is comparable to a raw potato. The binding and disintegration properties of isolated Nalumbo starch have been compared with maize and potato starch. Nalumbo starch is shown to be superior as an adjuvant in the preparation of tablets. When dried, and nucifero is also made into flour, another popular use of this vegetable. Lotus pip tea is consumed in Korea. Fresh lotus seeds are nutritious but also vulnerable to microbial contamination, especially fungal infections. Therefore, mostly dry lotus seed-based products are found on the market. Traditional sun baking combining with charcoal processing dries the seeds but results in loss of nutrients. Freeze-dried lotus seeds have a longer shelf life and maintain original nutrients while no differences in flavor is found after rehydration compared to fresh lotus seeds. Dry stored lotus seeds are sensitive to moisture and mold infestation. Researchers continue to explore new ways to preserve fresh lotus seeds for example radiation processing. Lotus seeds can be processed into moon cake lotus seed noodles and food in forms of paste, fermented milk, rice wine, ice cream, popcorn, and others, with lotus seeds as the main raw material. Fresh lotus seed wine has thirst quenching, spleen and anti-diarrheal advantages after drinking. Lotus seed tea is consumed in Korea, and lotus embryo tea is consumed in China and Vietnam. There is still much potential for research and development, mainly reflected in the extraction, separation, and purification of lotus seed nutrients and bioactive compounds. Young lotus stems are used as a salad ingredient in Vietnamese cuisine. In South Indian states, the lotus stem is sliced, marinated with salt to dry, and the dried slices are fried and used as a side dish. In Kerala and Tamil Nadu, this end product is called Tamaravathal. Lotus leaf tea is consumed in Korea. Lotus flower tea is consumed in Korea. The stamens can be dried and made into a fragrant herbal tea called Lia N Hua Cha in Chinese, or used to impart a scent to tea leaves. This Vietnamese lotus tea is called Tra Sen, Cha Sen, or Cha A E degree A P Sen. The petals, leaves, and rhizome can also all be eaten raw, but there is a risk of parasite transmission, it is therefore recommended that they be cooked before eating. The distinctive dried seed heads, which resemble the spouts of watering cans, are widely sold throughout the world for decorative purposes and for dried flower arranging. In Asia, the petals are sometimes used for garnish, while the large leaves are used as a wrap for food, not frequently eaten. In Korea, the leaves and petals are used as a chazan. 
Yankocha is made with dried petals of white lotus and Yanipcha is made with the leaves. A unique fabric from the lotus plant fibers is produced only at Inal Lake, Myanmar, and in Seam Reap is used for weaving special robes for Buddha images called Kia Thin Gan. Nalumbonusifero is the species of lotus sacred to both Hindus and Buddhists. Hindus revere it with the divinities Vishnu and Lakshmi often portrayed on a pink lotus in iconography. In the representation of Vishnu as Padmanabha, a lotus issues from his navel with Brahma on it. Goddess Saraswati is portrayed on a white-colored lotus. Often used as an example of divine beauty, Vishnu is often described as the lotus-eyed one. Its unfolding petals suggest the expansion of the soul. The growth of its pure beauty from the mud of its origin holds a benign spiritual promise. In Hindu iconography, other deities, like Gunga and Ganesha are often depicted with lotus flowers as their seats. The lotus plant is cited extensively within Puranic and Vedic literature, for example. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as the lotus is untouched by water. In Chinese culture Confucian scholar Zhou Dunyi wrote, I love the lotus because while growing from mud, it is unstained. Chinese, A degree C. AE registered trademark A superscript 1 A degree A E A E superscript 3 Yen E Euro O E A. A A Euro. Many deities of Asian religions are depicted as seated on a lotus flower. In Buddhist symbolism, the lotus represents purity of the body, speech, and mind as if floating above the muddy waters of attachment and desire. According to legend, Gautama Buddha was born with the ability to walk with lotus flowers blooming everywhere he stepped. In Tibet, Padme Samhava, the lotus born, is considered the second Buddha, having brought Buddhism to that country by conquering or converting local deities. In Christianity, the St. Thomas Cross features a lotus underneath a cross. In the classical written and oral literature of many Asian cultures the lotus is present in figurative form, representing elegance, beauty, perfection, purity, and grace, being often used in poems and songs as an allegory for ideal feminine attributes. In Sanskrit the word lotus has many synonyms. Since the lotus thrives in water, J.A. is added to synonyms of water to derive some synonyms for the lotus, like Ambuja, Nirja, Pankaj, Pankaja, Kamal, Kumala, Kunala, Aravind, Arvind, Nalin, Nalini, and Saraha and names derived from the lotus, like Padmavati or Padmini. These names and derived versions are often used to name girls, and to a lesser extent boys, in India, Nepal, and Sri Lanka as well as in many other countries influenced by Indic culture, like Thailand, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Laos. Drawing in turn on these beliefs, the international Baha'i community adopted this symbolism in the design of the Lotus Temple in New Delhi, India. The lotus flower is also the state flower of several Indian states, including Karnataka, Haryana, and Andhra Pradesh. Lotus Field Fruit of Nalumbo Nusifero, the dried seed cup is commonly used in flower arrangements. Bud of Nalumbo Nusifero Lotus Fruit at Mendut Monastery, Indonesia Bud of Nalumbo Nusifero Lotus Bud at Mendut Monastery, Indonesia Blooming Nalumbo Nusifero Lotus Flower at Mendut Monastery, Indonesia Miniature Lotus Flowers Daishoin, Miyajima, Japan